welcome, welcome everyone to episode one of Rock the Dragon. And I'm joined here by my great epic co-host, Mark. Mark, you want to explain to the people what we're going to be doing today? So I'm very excited to be here, Bam, thank you. Uh, this is a really big opportunity for anime fans and the FGC. Rock the Dragon is a brand new segment brought to you by the Esports Arena that'll be focusing on all things Dragon Ball. The anime and manga series that has sweeped the globe and spawned countless video games, in particular Dragon Ball Fighters, which will be featured heavily on this show. We'll be doing episode recaps, character analysis, as well as breakdowns from Dragon Ball Fighters and talking about different combination moves, and hopefully doing everything we can to keep you informed of the series and help you become a better fighting game community player at home. Yes, no, absolutely, man. I mean, like you said, we're all here because of this game, Dragon Ball Fighters, absolutely. and it's just because it is one of the most perfect fusions of like anime and the FGC, right? For me, I've been playing these games for a while, man. I've been over a decade, I've been like in the FGC just doing a lot of things and like and mostly particularly Smash. But even before I started, you know, I was playing Street Fighter, I was playing DOA. And those were things I love. And I, every single time, man, even the little kid I'd be playing and you're like, you hear about that new Dragon Ball game, right? And you're like, yes, like Super Putin, Batonin's out, I'm hyped. Like, I can play this, I'm just gonna be sick, it's gonna be a great game, it's gonna be the greatest thing in the world, and it never was the greatest thing in the world. And I'm just like, man, I just want a good Dragon Ball game. How cool would it be? I think everyone's always had a dream of just having, like, a great Dragon Ball game. And I think Dragon Ball Fighters is that game. I yeah. don't have a lot of experience when it comes to fighting games, but I have a lot of experience in the uh, anime community, particularly Dragon Ball. Yeah. And Dragon Ball Fighters is that game for me that really kind of pushes me and motivates me to want to get good at it. I'm terrible. So hopefully I'll have a lot to learn from you as well as uh, any participation from uh, outside oh, sources. You're learn. To, hey, don't yeah. worry, don't worry. But let's talk about what makes it like such a beautiful game. Because one of the things that's really cool and it catches a casual audience is like it just looks like you're playing like the anime. Like it looks like you are in there. And like that is just nuts. You know what I mean? Like and people love that because obviously like ever since we were kids, shout outs to Toonami all day. But like <laughs> we all got love for the anime, man. And it's, that's what's got me involved in Dragon Ball Fighters. I mean, honestly, I, I have played so many Dragon Ball games uh, since I first got into this series when I was seven years old, and pretty much every game from yeah. that point till now, from Legacy of Goku on the mm. Game Boy Advance, oh, if man, you remember you that. It back, dude. Woo! <laughs> my <laughs> God, I love that. Legacy yeah. of Goku 1, 2, oh, yeah. Boost Fury. Yep, call those, uh, seriously, mm. those were the best. But let's talk about the Dragon Ball community, man. Let's just, just talk about what's been happening, because obviously, one of the cool things, too, is. It wasn't just that we've had Dragon Ball Fighters come out, right? After all this time, we've also had a series that's mm -hmm. been out, you know, Dragon Ball Super. And so Dragon Ball Super has been pretty cool. I mean, for those of you who may not know, Dragon Ball Super is essentially like this point in between the ending of Dragon Ball Z, right? And it's like what where in which like from the end of Majin Buu being defeated to going to the point where you see Goku Years, years later, like meet up with like, ooh, and right. like, it's so those things like, what happened there? Like, how did Goku become a legend? Like, what else did he like get stronger? Who knows, right? Mm -hmm. And so obviously we have all the movies and stuff going on, and Super has been super sick. Unfortunately, it's coming to an end very soon. But if it's coming to an end. You know there's going to be a climax. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that we're going to have a great climax and a continuation at some point. Dragon Ball Super has been super entertaining. I know fans have been going nuts over continuing on this series uh, once Dragon Ball Z wrapped up. Uh, it was kind of sad and heartbreaking, but once we got those two movies and then Dragon Ball Super was announced, like that just really got things going again. Yeah. And naturally, because the entire series is uh, dedicated to fighting and strength and skill and, right. and all of that. Right. It's a perfect opportunity with Dragon Ball fighters to kind of tie both of that together, right? Like, yeah. the, But let's talk about what Dragon Ball Super happened, uh, or the latest episode, episode 128, yeah. right? Yeah, yep. So we, uh, we've got a lot to recap there. So for those of you guys that uh, are unfamiliar up until this point, uh, spoilers. Uh, but for those of you guys that have seen it, let's talk about it and break it down. So the most recent episode of uh, Dragon Ball Super, episode 128, features Jiren going against pretty much the leftovers from yeah. Universe 7, right? Now that that yeah, was interesting. Tell me, tell me about your thoughts about where we are and uh, what you hope to see coming up. Yeah, so a brief breakdown, guys. Of course, we just had the end of our beloved android something. He dipped out, 
Pour one for the homies, man. <laughs> Dude, he was honestly one of the greatest things of Super Hands. Oh, absolutely. Like, that can't actually even be our One game. of my greatest characters of all time, period. Yeah. Devastated. But yeah. it is the Dragon Ball right. world, so naturally there is a potential yeah. about him right. coming you back. But, you know, sad, right? we'll, we'll see. I'm disappointed he's not in it now, but. Yeah. Yeah, that happened, uh, wrapped up the last episode. Uh, Android 17 decided to sacrifice himself for the greater good, which was a really big, uh, I think, kind of ordeal in and of itself, just because Android 17 was such this big uh, antagonist throughout the series for a little bit. Then he kind of just became a, a neutral party. He wasn't really in uh, Dragon Ball Z post uh, the Cell Saga much, right? right? Uh, he appeared for a brief moment, lending energy to Goku in the anime to kind of help out taking right. on Majin Buu, and then he just never really was around after that. And then yeah. finally, you know, almost uh, 100 episodes, maybe more than 100 episodes into Dragon Ball Super, he comes in. He basically just wins everybody over yep. as uh, a really uh, helpful ally to the Z fighter, sacrifices himself to save Goku and Vegeta and giving them one more chance to uh, help them take on this big threat from Universe 11 uh, in this tournament of power, the Ark, yeah. which uh, sees the destruction of every universe save for the one that wins. Um, and that's where we're at right now, is we're at uh, Universe 7, which is our main primary universe where Goku and his friends are at. And yeah. then you have Universe 11 where Jiren is at. And Jiren is without a doubt the most powerful character besides uh, Zeno-sama uh, that we have ever seen. Yeah. It is outstanding yeah. how much of a fight that he's put up, especially against Goku in his new uh, Ultra Instinct form. No, absolutely. I mean, but like really, like of course we all know like the angels are like crazy strong and like angels definitely like are insane. Grand Peace is definitely insane. But in terms of like just up here, like people that we've actually seen like take action, right? Like it is crazy like what we've seen from Jiren and just even the way that even like the gods of destruction, you know, have this worry and feel like this character could be beyond them, right? Mm -hmm. At this next level. So it's insane because we've gone this far and we're about to reach the end and we still kind of really don't know like the true power of Jiren. Like we felt like we got this little like, <laughs> so like in the last episode, I feel like we got this little backstory of Jiren and it literally just was like, yeah, this guy had a rough childhood, but then he's just like a boss. And we still know absolutely nothing as to why he's so strong. Okay, so full disclosure, I went back and I rewatched a couple of episodes to be fresh for this recording, right? And so I wanted to kind of get uh, as much information on Jiren as yeah. I could for talking points. And I, and I <laughs> going back, I watched, yeah, I watched episode 128 twice just to get an idea of what Jiren's all about, mm -hmm. like where he comes from and his upbringing. And I'm like, what about his childhood is worse than, worse than Vegeta's? This kid was basically thrown into slavery, yep. right? His entire uh, family was brutally murdered at the hands of Frieza, yep. Frieza at some point. All yep. of his friends, everyone he's ever known. His yep. home planet is destroyed. It's yep. him and just a couple of people that are left right. alive. Yep. And he still has to work for Frieza. So I'm thinking, okay, if Vegeta has spent all this time training, harder than anyone we've ever seen in, Dra in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Super, and that other one we probably won't talk about that much. And for whatever reason, Jiren, in some way, shape, or form, has been able to train harder, more extremely, and have a power that rivals even the gods of destruction. So we don't know, as you said, just how powerful Jiren is, but I want to know what exactly he's been doing that Vegeta and Goku, have. like they've been training with the gods directly as well for yeah, a yeah. long time. Right, right. So what exactly is Jiren doing to become so powerful, and will he be the victor in this fight versus Universe 11 where he's from, right. and Universe 7 where Goku's at, given that Goku has reached a new level of strength. But one thing that did kind of like linger over my head as I rewatched this episode, I just got to thinking, okay, this guy is motivated purely by the fact that he can't trust other people, only himself, and that there was this villainous evil that killed everyone he knew and loved. Right. And I'm wondering, who is this guy? Like, right. you know, if, this, if, if the series is going to end very, very soon, we don't have a lot of episodes left, there's right. a handful of episodes, right. that's something we need to explore. Yeah. I want to figure out just exactly who this was that made Jiren as powerful as he is right. yeah, just by, you know, being a terrible, terrible creature or being or whatever. No, absolutely. And so I think that's definitely something that they're going to actually be exploring. But um, of course, obviously, so we saw Vegeta, he fought to the bitter end, he yep. didn't make it, you know, he got put, hit off the stage, you saw him kind of falling back, you saw that kind of like precious moment where you had all these characters, you know, coming in and through his thoughts, his family, because he understands what is at stake here. His universe yep. is at stake, his family's at stake, his love is at stake, right? Yep. And it was a very beautiful moment, just inside and outside of the anime, of course, because that we heard Bulma at the end, you know, and then he gives the power away to Goku. It says, Kakarot, you got to do this. And of course, uh, every, I know a lot of you know already, the voice actors for Bulma, Yohoro Masura is no longer with us, right? And that's yep. the last time we'll ever hear her. Yep. So it was a very meaningful moment for the fans and the community. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, and it just, it wrapped everything up so well. And then, of course, Goku's getting pummeled. He's in base form. He obviously looks like he's going to lose. And then, dun, 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 dun. And then all of a sudden, there we go. Ultra Instinct. Everyone knows what was going to happen. Right. And now it's like the mastery, right? Now mm -hmm. we're looking at the final battle, the full form, and what is going to happen is like, because obviously he has to master it. We saw like it briefly in the previews, you know, him kind of turning more purely silver now, right? And so I think we're going to see that he's for the most going to stay at that kind of style. Like, I think it's going to be where his hair is going to be silver, yeah. but ultimately it's going to look like his base form because in Japan, they love base form. It's Goku. iconic, absolutely. Like, they love it. Like, they. It's funny because, of course, like in fighters, like people sometimes are like, they, you know, everyone heard the rumor that there's going to be base form Goku and everyone's upset. But the reason why he's in there is because, like, everyone loved, like, his hair, his look, mm -hmm. his style. They love that, you know, especially after they've seen, like, so many Super Saiyans and all these, like, abbreviations of. They just love Goku fighting as that. And I think mm -hmm. that's why a lot of times we see Goku even start at that form in the first place when we obviously know there's no way he's going to beat, like, some of these opponents that he has. It's just because. It is something that you said is iconic, and it's something that is really, really loved back in Japan, you know? So I think he's going to stay that way. I think he's just going to continue to look that way. It's just going to be silver, you know, have that silver hair, and, like, you know, he's just going to go to that next level. And I think that... Makes sense. Um, like you said, it's going to be cool because we're seeing this aura and this energy and all these things these guys are going to be able to do. I mean, Jaren literally punched through hits like... He like literally punched through time. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, he basically punched through time. So it's like, you know what I mean? I'm like, uh, all right, cool. So it's like these guys are going to do some crazy stuff, dude. So who, I mean, given that Jiren has demonstrated such a high level of strength, mm -hmm. and given that Goku has finally just reached a point where he's able to uh, ascertain the, an energy that gets him to the next level to keep up with Jiren, who do you think is going to win between these two? Oh man, it's, I don't know. It's I think that it would be great for the series. And I feel like they've been kind of alluding to certain things like this, but I f do feel like it would be great for the series if they want to continue on that Goku loses. I think so too. I think that we kind of have had this whole idea that one of the reasons why people were kind of excited about like going into Super was the whole notion of when we saw like Battle of the Gods and we saw like we saw Beerus. And he goes, like, basically, Goku goes all out, goes to the next level, like, goes to some unattainable form we never, we never even knew about, right? Like, we never knew about being Super Saiyan God. Mm -hmm. And yet, all those things, all those limits that he broke, right, it still was not, not even scratching the surface not of what been. Beerus can do. Yeah. And that was a beautiful thing, because it brought it back almost to, like, the Dragon Ball, like, just Dragon Ball S feel, like... I don't think it's as good, as, like the story has been sure. as cohesive, you know, as Dragon Ball. But the whole idea of that, like, Goku is this little one with potential, rather than being someone who's just like, oh, we just think he's just like at that infinite strength. And yeah, he's just going to go and beat them, right? He's eventually going to beat them. He'll get some kind of power up. It's like a thing now where it's like, it has that feel of that scale again, where it's like, some of these opponents just seem like they're out of Goku's league, even though Goku has that potential. And that's kind of been the cool thing, and that's what's drawn me into, like, Super. So I do hope that is a thing that Goku loses, and I think that it would be nice to see that Jiren and Goku can kind of go up to the level in which the angels are kind of intimidated. Because it seems like this thing where it's like, like you said, like you have the gods, like the small gods, almost like, I feel like the gods of destruction are almost kind of like the Greek gods, right? And then you have the angels, and then you have Xenos, who's supposed to be the, like the king of all, right? And then you have the Grand Priest, and I feel like the Grand Priest, like, Priest, to be honest, I feel like he's, like, the strongest one. Like, I actually feel that, like, there's, later down the line, it's going to be a thing where it's, like, almost kind of, like, if, like, Xenos is, like, he's, like, the childish, like, god, right? And then you have the Grand Priest, where he's, like, almost the one who deals with affairs and stuff, like, almost like the... Jesus, so yeah, like, like the next level, right? Xenosama being like on the top like that, I mean, he just has like, okay, snap my fingers and the universe is gone. He doesn't really need to have like battle power because mm -hmm. he can just end everything in like the snap of a finger. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to see like what certain characters are going to demonstrate strength to angels and above. Mm -hmm. I would like to see something happen where maybe uh, Jiren ends up uh, winning but having some sort of character development because right. it seems like while 
they're both fighting for the universe. Jiren is fighting for himself. Yeah. Goku is fighting as a Saiyan because he just likes to fight, right. but he also knows what's at stake. Without that, he wasn't he wouldn't have been able to get to the Ultra Form and use that against Jiren to Absolutely. you know be equal on equal playing ground. But Jiren doesn't care about that. Yeah. Jiren wants absolute strength, which as far as he knows, he has. He's demonstrated that against everybody when Android 17 self-destructed was taken out, when he put Goku and Vegeta's faces in the dirt. Like yep. he was yeah. able to demonstrate that <laughs> that ultimate, like unrelenting strength. Yeah. So to him, it's not a game. It's nothing else other than like I lost everyone I loved. Now I love nothing except strength itself right. because that's what I need to survive. Yeah. And you know, if I win and save the universe with it, that's fine. But that's not really why he's doing it. Yeah, he's space for you, man. His his motiv <laughs> his motivations are very, very different. So yeah. I would like to see maybe like, you know how Vegeta said to Kaba, right? He's like, hey, we're gonna win. And when we do, we're gonna wish your universe back. Right. So you'll be dead for a little while. Don't worry about mm -hmm. it, we gotcha. Which I thought was kind of cool. Vegeta's right. never really demonstrated that sort of care before, right, right. especially outside of his own family. Yeah, true. Um, but now, because Jiren doesn't care about any of that, it'd be nice to see Jiren win, stomp Goku into the ground, finish it off, and then something, something, something. He maybe says like, hey, Super Dragon Balls, let's bring back all these universes, or you know, or whatever. Yeah, like maybe not something that's corny, necessary. but yeah. something that makes fans happy, brings back you know those that, that were killed, or whatever that right, looks right. like. Yeah, and so it's like, I don't know. So like basically to wrap it up, like you said, and like, there's just so many places they can go with this. Lots story. of potential and possibilities. And I feel like as long as they execute it properly, you can have a great ending and great beginning for something really Absolutely. new. So, I mean, obviously the episode was incredible. We're excited to see what's going to be happening for the climax. Um, I know we've already talked about it, but just to touch base again, man, just having Hiromi Suru not going to be there anymore as the voice yeah. of Bulma. For 30 years, I think 30, 30 some odd years, yeah, 31 30 years, years, something like that, yeah. she voiced Bulma amongst many yeah. other characters. There was a, an episode, several episodes back, where it was dedicated specifically to her, but as Bam said, this was the last time that we're going to hear her voice in the series. Right. Dude, man, you know what would be sick? Hmm. If Bulma was actually in Fighters, like, were, like rocking some robot, like almost kind of like a Tron Bond or something like that, like in other fighting games. Like, I think that'd be super cool. I want a Rayleigh. That's who oh, I want. That little robot yeah, girl yeah, that was running yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. That's who I want. Yeah, that ultimate sick. power. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but let's go into Dragon Ball Fighters now. Um, let's go let's into what's it. been going on in the tournaments. <laughs> One of the cool things about this game as a whole is like it's been able to bring in a lot of people from the FGC as a whole, um, from different like sub genres, right? So we had uh, we had Win and Brawl that just happened, and you had DOA players. DOA is Dead or Alive for you guys who don't know. Um, obviously, we, we have people who have played Tekken. We have people who have played games like Skullgirls and Smash. And For the Injustice. record, I don't know what half of those are, no, including DOA. They, so. Well, basically, these are all like games where the, a lot of people, times you don't see crossover from these games. You have like Marvel players, Street Fighter players. And so it's like, it's really unique because you're having different scenes. Heck, man, I was like, I was watching Twitch the other day and I saw Dyrus on there. And Dyrus, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys know Dyrus. Like, I've seen. I'm pretending to know who that uh, is. <laughs> Just, he's a, he's a league, he's a league of legends. Like, it's bringing in League of yeah. Legends players into Dragon Ball yeah, Fighters. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, it's almost like it's like to the next level of Smash of in terms of like it just brings in everyone because the characters are just so damn so iconic. Let's, okay, man. let's talk about that for a second because I think I'm a prime example of this. I'm not going to pretend to be a master of any fighting games for right. that matter. I play Dragon Ball Fighters because I am a Dragon Ball fan yeah. first and foremost. I uh, I am not good at the game. I've mm -hmm. played PvP and PvP and I've gotten destroyed yeah. countless times. Never won a match. But I like playing it because the characters feel good. I spent time with Carl White, uh, Perfect Legend. For those of you guys who know, he was here for the Super Saiyan Showdown yeah. event uh, on Christopher Sabat's side, the voice of Vegeta, respectively. And he was teaching me uh, some combo moves and like timing and way to ex ways to execute uh, certain combinations. And uh, I obviously couldn't do it. But but I will say that I understood the concept enough to want to keep trying. Yeah. So I mean I'm. I'm surprised that I have such a high level of interest in a game like this because, for example, and we talked about this as well, that for me, I, uh, I'm a Marvel fan. I, I love Spider-Man, like Captain America, you know, all those characters, the well-known ones from the MCU right. movies and the ones that are not. But Marvel versus Capcom, for you know, whatever reason, I couldn't get into. One of the cool things about Dragon Ball Fighters is that the mechanics are really, like, they're so freeform. So, again, so usually in traditional fighters, you have, like, once you jump, you can only go like the direction you already jumped into. Sure. In Dragon Ball, you can kind of weave back and forth Get in that the air, right? air, air mobility. Exactly, right? So it's more kind of like a platform or like a platform fighter, right? So it's like you feel more free in your movement. You have like a ton of jumps. You have like 
super jumps, you can do like different kind of hops, right? And you, since you can pull back, you can do a lot of interesting there things there. Some you can like kind of like fast fall with your character too. Uh, and, and so there's a lot of different like movements there. And so there's a basically the genre of where Dragon Ball kind of fits right now is like an anime fighter. But anime fighters are usually like the highest execution for fighting games as a whole. But there's a lot of little things they put in the game to make it more kind of easier, more like more palpable to the mind, right? And so, and also the cool thing about it is those things are things that are very Dragon Ball-esque, like the reflect, right? You have the reflect, obviously we see that all the time in Dragon Ball, you know, it's usually Vegeta just shooting off a freaking key blast like a moron and right. just like, get that crap out of me, you know? Does absolutely nothing, even though it's like one of his iconic moves, but no one gives a crap about them. But you can do that in Dragon Ball, right? And so it's like, and it works like a kind of parry system. I don't know if you've seen this before, but like the iconic moment with Daigo, and then it was Daigo and Justin Wong, and basically like, it's at a major tournament, it was Evo, and he basically parries all these things. So I don't know if you've ever seen the Chun-Li and the Ken just pairing all those things. It's pretty, you can just nod your head and pretend like you've seen yeah, it. Of course I've yeah, seen so it, course, obviously. Yes, I'm not some okay. noob <laughs> here. What's wrong with you? Anyways, the point is like... Filthy peasant. Like that whole idea of like being able to like parry things is something that's been really cool in Dragon Ball. And it's also the, it's been really iconic in the fighting game community. Well, let, so, me, let me ask you this, because this is something that I, I have a hard time understanding myself despite being invested in these games, mm -hmm. right? So we talked about this to touch base on it earlier. So I've played tons of Dragon Ball games, right? right. We've established we both have. Yeah. You have far more experience than I ever hope to imagine with FGC. But that being said, Dragon Ball games are all centered around fighting. Right. Dragon Ball Xenoverse, even if you're playing against the computer, can sometimes be a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, PvP is much more difficult mm -hmm. um, because you're dealing with like a real human-esque strategy. But even with Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2, where you have a lot more customization, even your own custom character for that matter, just, you know, and you can play as uh, some of the more iconic characters from the series, and given all that and everything that you can do, mm -hmm. what is it about that that, say, a Dragon Ball fan would see, give up, and then want to move over to Dragon Ball Fighters, where you're just choosing maybe like some colored uh, skins of some existing characters from the roster. Why? Why would that draw it in? I don't. I still can't fully explain why I'm like obsessed with it myself. But from your experience, why would I want to keep doing it? Because a lot of times you'll see these other games, right? So you have, for example, I have Xenoverse. I have Xenoverse um, on my Switch, and when you play it, it's very clunky. The, like, just the movement, um, the mechanics are clunky. There's a lot of cool things they put in there for fans, right? And obviously their roster, like, completely outshines fighters. Mm -hmm. But the way, there's a lot of attention detail to, like, how movement works in fighters, which is really nice. So, again, like, going back to the kind of anime fighters, they borrow a lot from that. So you have air dashes, right? And you can do things like instant air dashes that are, like, really, really cool. Um, but then also they have the super dash feature, which you'll usually see in like a Xenoverse or something like that. But the combination of having like your regular own dash that you can do manually and mix up, and then you also have the super dash that goes on, and the fluidity of like them like all in general, it allows it to. It's just something that just feels more. It's not just oh I just super dash and then that's it. Like I can super dash and then like, like I can go retreat back. You know, and then do like a like, do like a five M like or like do a jump M just come down. You know, I can go ahead and do that, and then I can just go for air dash, go for a high. There's a lot of cool things you can do because you can add all like those combinations together. Whereas like even for Xenoverse, where I, I know some people play competitively, there's just like again, it's going to be very clunky, and there's just like not much like oh. Maybe this guy's just pressing this like super dash a little bit better than me at this time, or right. you know understands the basic timings, or he has kind of you know a solid neutral, so he's going to do these things. But there's just so much more, you know. There's just so much more meat when it comes to fighters. So when I'm playing Dragon Ball Xenoverse, for example, just because that's the most recent game prior to fighters that people would be mostly familiar with, Xenoverse Two. I mean, you're saying that it is totally fair and reasonable to sacrifice the customization and uh, all the different options that you have. Um, simply just because Dragon Ball Fighters is a fighting game that is so beautifully articulate in the way that it combines uh, smooth execution, mm -hmm. combinations, yep. and I would even I would I would definitely go so far as to say that the the roster what we're at like twenty some characters mm -hmm. more or less right mm -hmm. they feel so much more fleshed out and as you said like meaty 
than say like the 50 billion characters that we have in Xenoverse right. 1 and 2. Right, and they all do like essentially the entirely same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And whereas even in this game, like some people may argue like, oh wow, there's Goku and then there's Goku Black. They play way different. Way different. And their combos are way different, all those things. In fact, like let's just go ahead, let's watch the Twitter videos, man. So we got Twitter videos from people right. because people are already going in there and they're putting on a lot of work into this game. And this, like just, just as a Dragon Ball fan, watching these makes you realize the beauty that is like from the fighting game perspective. So, cool. Let's take let a look. Let that roll, man. Let it roll. pick any line of characters such as like Yamcha, Krillin or, or whatever and oh, do yeah. really well with them. Yeah. I know Nerd Josh was doing it at the uh, Super Saiyan showdown and he was just kind of messing around and just demonstrating uh, some amazing moves with some of the more uh, relatively weaker characters stat wise showing that it really doesn't matter what their stats are because if you're good with them it yeah. just takes a little bit of practice you can do some That's major also damage. also another thing too um, a lot of times in those universe games stuff as well they don't really look for balance in mind so you're going to have like if you're playing like Krillin versus freaking Beerus you're just going to get mopped like for free sure. and that's just literally how it is but um, you know obviously in this game it's balanced because it's intended to be a competitive game and so characters are going to be you know, the balance overall is like 
fairly solid. Um, one of the cool things, actually, for um, if you've played the story, the story isn't that great. Fighting game stories usually aren't that great. Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, the cool thing about it is they do have a kind of explanation as to why all the characters are at, like, a base power level where they can all actually compete with each other. So that's kind of nice, a uh, little reasoning for why the game's balanced the way it is. I skipped the campaign. Yeah. I have no idea why. I started playing good, it. Good it, it annoyed me, and I was <laughs> I like, mm, nah. <laughs> it was just, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't, I don't want to hate on it, but, I mean, I kind of cringe a little bit. I mean, so that's, I, 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 that's how those things go, right? I let mean, that take a back seat yeah, while I just, you yeah, know, practice I mean, on my own. Yeah, I mean, they put the money where it needs to be, and that's mm -hmm. in the gameplay and paying homage to so many different things, Which man. they do so beautifully. Oh my goodness, Oh my gosh. Like, okay, so let's go into Winter Brawl. Let's just talk about the standings and everything that happened there, but I wanna actually just really quickly just talk about like why this game's so awesome. So the intros, right? So everyone was watching the intros in top eight, and of course, my man of perfection, Cell, every time he was on screen, Everyone, literally the crowd, right? When he does his pop-up, he goes, ah! And every single person was doing it in the crowd. Every <laughs> single, without fail, without fail, everyone was doing it. And it's like, like, there's so many other games that are just not going to make you feel that way. Because no. like I said, you literally feel like you're playing the damn anime and it's so good. So anyways, going to Winter Brawl 12, we've had, um, we had kind of the battle of, like, well, it was the first major, really, that we had yeah. for Dragon Ball. Yep, yep, yep. And it was insane because we had what we, a lot of people were kind of, like, prophesizing. Like, you would have, like, all the FGC come together. Like I said, you had all these people from DOA, Injustice, Marvel, Street Fighter, all those games, right? Um, and non-fighting game people like myself, yeah, too. Like, it, people know, are coming people from all coming over the, the place. Yeah, so it was just insane. And um, so one of the major storylines there was so recently right now sonic fox has been dominating in this game like dominating everybody so i've heard all right and so he's like the east coast representative but also the west coast dragon ball fighters has been pretty good these guys have been doing fairly well so you kind of had this fi first clash that happened at winter brawl 12 where you had uh you had evil geniuses chris g uh, this guy is uh like Mar he's marlhead he's won evos before uh, one of the best fighting game players of our generation. Uh, and then he went up against Sonic Fox, who's also one of the best fighting game players in our generation. So it's East Coast versus West Coast. Right. And Chris G just really? slapped this man oh. up 2-0, and everyone was stunned. Everyone everyone was stunned, right? Um, he basically OCV'd. Um, that's going to be basically... Um, one character victory, right? So like you basically- I was gonna ask, yeah, I didn't yeah. know what that was. Yeah. Sorry, so just I didn't yeah. know. So that basically means that like you didn't lose a character. You just like, you had your one character and then you just bodied them, right? Um, and then uh, then he lost one character, I think in the second uh, match and then that was it. So clean 2-0 and everyone was just stunned because Sonic Fox had not lost. He was undefeated. Undefeated in Dragon Ball Fighters up to that point. So that happened. And then it's funny because Chris G made an interesting tweet because everyone's just like, Sonic is free. This is this is Twitch chat, by the way. Sure. It's like, just the FTC, it doesn't matter what happens. If you lose, you're automatically free. It doesn't matter what you've ever done before. You're the worst in the world. Uh. You're washed. You're done. I love people. <laughs> they just love the drama. The they internet is such a drama. kind place. I, I love it. I love it. All right? So forgiving. So everyone's just like, this guy's free. Christopher Genus has saved us. You know, and... Then you go, go ahead and Christian made an inter interesting tweet and he was saying, hey guys, you know, I know everyone, it's crazy that everyone's talking this way, but basically Sonic Fox has defeated, you know, literally 99% of all the people in Dragon Ball Fighters up to this point. He's like, who knows? Maybe he comes back in top eight and destroys me. And of course, these guys meet in grand finals and Sonic Fox coming from the loser side, which means he had to beat Christian Six times, Oof. right? He had to beat him six times, and he cleaned him up. What a monumental comeback. 6-0, and Echo Fox, Sonic Fox, was able to take Winter Brawl 12. And it was crazy because there was one moment in game two, set one, where you had Chris G was trying to change the future, man, with Trunks, and he was doing well. He had a, got a great conversion, 
And what he had to do is he wanted to, he needed to finish off with a level three. Sure. So he used the vanish to get down to the ground and uh, quick, quickly, but he just didn't do it in time. And so he does the vanish and then he whiffs the level three, doesn't get it, and then so Sonic Fox ended up winning that game. And you could see on Chris G's face, you could see that he was guard broken. The sheer and look he, of oh defeat. Yeah. And Sonic Fox pain. Too. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you can't do that to Goku Black, man, or assassin like Hit, man. You can't do that. And then since then, then it was just Dunk City, Dunk City, getting blacked, all those things, man. Like he could not stop Sonic Fox. Like it was absolutely insane. But um, it was great. It was great to see high level Dragon Ball Fighters, just to see kind of what it's going to look like. Um, we saw a lot of great gameplay come out of Chris G and his uh, going with Android 18. Uh, he even actually used some of his secondary teams uh, during some casuals going on, and they looked pretty clean too. I was really excited about that. He's using the Vegeta assist. Like I said, man, it doesn't matter what it is in the series with those the key blasts that Vegeta loves to do all the time. It's absolutely amazing in any fighting game. Right. <laughs> even though it's trash in the series. I mean, it's like, <laughs> that does nothing, but it's just good. It's just good in fighting him. So it's a great assist. Um, he's able to, you know, Run them all on point two, but uh, for the most part, he used them as an assist. And it worked out really well for Chris G, but he just wasn't able to finish it off. But one of the cool things that happened is then we had a little call out that happened. Oh, yeah? All right. So we had a little call out, and Sonic Fox came up to the mic and he told them, he told everyone there, he said, Goichi, who's the best player right now in Japan. In Dragon Ball Fighters, he told them, "You're already dead. Ooh. You are already dead." Of course, he said it in Japanese. How do you, can you do it? What, what, what is it? Say, it? say it again. I think it's Omura de Shinderu. O, Omura Shinderu. Was we're I butching, close? Oh yeah, we're butching all. The okay, all right. Just here. yeah, you know, we'll funny. hear about it on the internet. I can I'm actually sure. speak some like you know decent good. Like, <laughs> actual real Japanese. Decent good. Do it. <laughs> decent give, give me some good. decent good Japanese. Decent good. I want to hear it. You want to hear it? I want to hear it. You want to hear my Japanese? I want to hear your Japanese. Nihongo ga hanashimasu. Hmm? See, Again, one more time. absolutely nothing to you. <laughs> Anyways, back on the show. <laughs> but serious, um, ultimately, like, it was really, really great overall. Like I said, man, it, it's going to be crazy to see what's going to go on with this game. And, of course, to see the... First clash of Sonic Fox going up against Goichi. I am super excited. I, I, I really want to see this. I want to get better. I want to learn tons, and I want to watch people get stomped so I can learn a thing or two and become the next FGC champion. Wow. I got really, really, really big aspirations, I'm just saying. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, maybe we have to do that. Okay. Maybe that's All where right. we have to go. I want to challenge you. I was, you're, you're my starting point. I want to take you on. All right. Yeah. Let's do it, man. All right. Get us out of here, man. I, I mean, all someone's right, gotta right. hit that up. They gotta right. end the show, man. All right, all right. So we got this special gong. This wraps up uh, the first episode of Rock the Dragon with a, a, a gong ding. Hope you guys stay tuned next week. We'll talk more about uh, Dragon Ball Super, another episode recap. And we also plan on doing a lot of focus on specific characters, combinations, and having a showcase on one character per week uh, and then some. A lot of big oh, things yes. happening oh, with yes. Dragon Ball Fighters. A lot of stuff happening with Dragon Ball Super. I'm going to go uh, beat the crap out of Bam in this game, and uh, he's not going to know what hit him. And then, uh, and then uh, Sonic Fox... You're already dead. All right, here we go. <laughs> Wait, I missed it. Hold on, one more you time. One time. Come on, I, I made a bad angle. Come okay, on, here we go. Come on, man. You, you, don't have, you don't even have footsies, man. You don't even have footsies yet, dude. You're done. You're done. Let's go. Let's move it on. Let's get out of here. I can't. I can't believe this. I can. I, can't I, I expect this, this to happen. All right. Okay. I feel like when I open my mouth really wide, my ears close up. And I can't hear. Nice. <laughs> I'm not anatomically correct.